with someone everybody's describing as a very eloquent man but take a look at that picture behind us all on tv right now that was the president in jamaica not that long ago he was actually the special guest guest of honor representing all of africa at jamaica's independence independent was it 200 whatever it was uh, 250 yeah, it was, whatever it was yeah, yeah. but he was the special guest of honor yeah how did that trip come about I mean, what was that about that trip was about the work that the president has been doing to reach out uh, to the black community in the world and to get people to understand that we as a, as a, as a African diaspora mm -hmm. have certain things in common and if we come together we can leverage our opportunities differently. And remember that in the Caribbean, they celebrate Africa. They venerate Africa. And they look to Africa for cultural, religious, uh, philosophical uh, uh, leads. They, they want to believe that Africa is the mother continent. Mm. And anybody who has lived and worked abroad, as the president has, understands that connection. And so, uh, in building this outreach into the African diaspora, we have come to realize the great benefit. And now, when the president traveled to Jamaica, then went to Barbados, mm -hmm. where he convened a meeting of the CARICOM, that is uh, about uh, 15 countries in the Caribbean, and reached out to them and said, you know what, we are indeed one and we can all find cause together. And the consequence of that is that we are having the president of uh, uh, Barbuda and Antigua, Prime Minister, coming out here to the uh, uh, ICPD conference that's coming up in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. We are having uh, the Prime Minister of Barbados coming out here uh, for the, uh, uh, as our guest during December 12th. And we're having a number of prime ministers here from the Caribbean. And now we're talking about open air, opening air routes, about building cultural links, about, about e having exchanges with students. They have great schools out there for law and for, um, and for medicine. Uh, suddenly, what was not on our screen, was what was not seen as a great opportunity for our country, mm. becomes part of our orbit. Is there goodwill from those guys? Is oh, it amazingly, yeah. amazing. I mean, you, ha you, ha you have no idea how much goodwill there is in the world and in the Caribbean for Kenya, you know? And it's not just because we are whom we are, but it's also because of our history, you know, our struggle history. It has been a beacon for many, many countries. Everybody likes to forget yeah. that Kenya's struggle for independence was a beacon for countries from Algeria all the way down to Latin America and the Caribbean. Because we are the ones who took the battle to the colonialists and invented uh, a, a way of engaging in an asymmetrical war that took advantage of what everybody perceived to be our weakness. Mm. And that led in many, many ways the revolution that we saw that began the fight in the world around counter-colonialism. Is that why there was a statue of Jomo Kenyatta presented to the president uh, in, in, in Jamaica? Yeah. The, uh, Jomo Kenyatta's name re resonates. There are people <laughs> in the Caribbean who are called Kamau. <laughs> I mean, and it's not know, after you, and it's not after me. I can assure you. <laughs> but yes. I mean, they really appreciate uh, what this country uh, has meant uh, to to the struggle for human dignity, for human rights, for human freedoms in the world. Yeah. We may have lost sight of that ourselves, but they haven't. I'll come back to the ICPD in just a, a short moment. You mentioned opening up routes, and, and it just struck me. As much criticism as Kenya Airways got for that non-stop flight from JKIA to JFK, mm -hmm. one year later, most profitable thing they ever did. 
<laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. 76% average. Oh, yeah. Like 105,000 passengers moved. You can't get a seat on that flight. You cannot. It's amazing. They went, they, you know, I remember when it first kicked off, they were saying, we're going to do four or five days. Yeah. And then they, they, they kind of couldn't quite get there because yeah. they hadn't gotten their word out. Mm -hmm. So they reduced mm -hmm. to about two or three days. And everybody said, you see, we told you it's a failure. Correct. It's back to, I think, six days a week or something. It's an amazing and flight. And it's jam-packed. Non-stop. And it's a beautiful flight. The Dreamliner yeah. is an incredible aircraft. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, you know, again, we're our, our, we are our own worst enemies because we said this thing, yeah. it's a loss-making thing. What are yeah. you people doing? Yeah. We missed the opportunity. Kenya Airways could turn around and become a phenomenal transport uh, system on our continent and can connect us and make Nairobi an amazing hub. But again, we have to believe, we have to plan, and we have to execute, you know? And we all have to come to the party together. Yeah. Okay, so you mentioned the ICPD a moment ago. There's a conference coming up on uh, November 12th to the 14th. Yes. In a couple of weeks' time. That's right. What is that about? It's the International Conference on Population and Development. You know, Kenya, we've now become uh, the quintessential uh, destination for international conferences. We've had quite a few uh, this year. We're going to have another one in December with the uh, African Caribbean and Pacific countries. It's an EU thing, but it's going to bring in a lot of leaders here. And now we're having this particular one in a couple of weeks, and it's going to deal with issues to do with maternal health, uh, promoting greater gender uh, sensitivities, reducing gender violence in our homes, and gender violence between uh, males and females, uh, protecting young women, uh, getting rid of uh, harmful practices such as female genital mutilation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it is an agenda of civilizing our society and, and, and getting us to be a more responsible, more, uh, more friendly, if you want, uh, society so that we are living in a civilized way. Yeah. I mean, who would want, who wants their mother or their sister to die in childbirth? I mean, why isn't it an, an amazing thing for us to aspire to have zero deaths for our sisters and our mothers in childbirth. In the 21st century? In the 21st century. Sure. That's the number one thing we are aspiring for, to zero out maternal uh, deaths related to childbirth. Yeah. And you're expecting a whole bunch of heads of state? I mean, uh -huh. We have 15 signed up already, wow. and about another five or six prime ministers, and about 193 ministers. So we're going to pretty much have the entire world here represented. Yep. And uh, once again, uh, we're very proud of the fact that we were chosen to do this. Uh, it didn't come by coincidence. I think the United Nations recognized that we are up to the mark, uh, that we can do great hosting in Kenya. Mm. Uh, we have great capabilities, great taxi drivers, great hotels, you know? Yeah. It's all part of it. Yeah, we have 4G network. Hey, that is not a joke. <laughs> it is an amazing thing. Yeah. When, mo when most people come here, yeah. they can never believe that they'll go, arrive in Nairobi for $1, 100 shillings, they'll get 4G and they'll just walk around the city. Yeah. They, 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 it's absolutely unbelievable. It's mind-boggling, isn't it? It's mind-boggling. But we take it for granted, we and we knock it. <laughs> <laughs> Typical of us. Hey, but don't forget, we have M-Pesa. You know, there's another transformative yeah. thing. Financial inclusion. Do you know we're number one in the world on that now? Are you serious? Oh, yeah. When it comes to financial inclusion. Yeah. Yeah. You, but what can't you do on that platform? <laughs> Pretty much nothing. Everything is doable on that. Everything is doable on, on, that on your platform. phone. On, on your, your phone. phone, you know, your taxis, your 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 food if you want it delivered, yeah, yeah. Uh, your your medical help, uh, you name it, it's there. And it costs, and the and the cost is highly competitive. So as much as we knock ourselves, we have no clue. You can't do that in New York. No, you can't. You cannot do that in New York. No, you cannot. There you have it. Well, what can I say? <laughs> Let's look at some tweets, Belosi. <laughs> you know, you've nailed it, man. I don't know. Maybe people need to travel a little yeah. more to appreciate. What do you think? I, I, I would say, or read. Well, thank you. <laughs> you just nailed it again. Nixon Buro wa Dohire in Kindaruma. This is text messages. The U.S. President's emergency plan for AIDS relief, PEPFAR, 
which funds most HIV activities, has been cutting health funds to Kenya. What's your take as our number one foreign affairs defender? PEPFAR was an amazing program. It was put in place by President Bush. George W. Bush. Uh, uh, and and, and it, it has had an amazing impact. Uh, we have the Elizabeth Glazer Foundation, which is partly funded by PEPFAR. They have done great things with the little children, you know, saving the lives of mm. little children mm. who are infected by AIDS. Mm. Yes, we are terribly concerned that the success that Kenya has achieved in this area of bringing down uh, AIDS infections, instead of it being celebrated by more resources and more funds, it's been cut. We believe that uh, this is something that PEPFAR uh, needs to reconsider. Mm. Uh, we think the way in which they've gone about it has created a shock to our health system, which was totally unnecessary. Uh, and we urge uh, the director of PEPFAR uh, in the United States to really reconsider this because uh, what PEPFAR was doing in Kenya was not only exemplary to the rest of the continent, mm -hmm. but it was transformative. Is that right? It is really. Okay. All right. Viewer. Again, text message. What about the fate of the Cuban doctors who were abducted to Somalia? I know. That's a heartbreaker. I, 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 I can't lie to you. Mm. Um, it was one of the saddest moments of our, of our ministry, yeah. uh, of our government. Uh, here are doctors who've come to help Kenyans. They've left their country, traveled thousands of miles across the globe, and taking themselves to the remotest part of our country. And that happened. We've had to re reconsider how we engage those doctors, but they're doing great work in our country. Yeah. And uh, we know they're alive. Uh, we know they're well. And we work every day, quietly, behind the scenes, to make sure that they'll be free. Mm. and go back to their families. By the way, I was, I was in a conversation with the president. I'm not name dropping here, but I'm just saying, and he mentioned the Cuban dogs. He says he has never seen such hardworking human oh, beings. Amazing. These guys do their 18 hour shifts. They go, they, ch they rest for six hours and they come back. They come back. And they won't leave an operation mid, mid or whatever, mid never, never. They'll, they'll keep going. That's right. Amazing wow. people. Hmm? Yeah. All right. Dr. Cyrus Njiru says, congratulations, uh, Principal Secretary Ambassador Mashari Kamal, you are indeed one of our best diplomats, best wishes in the campaign to get us a seat in the United Nations Security Council. All right. Hello. More SMSs coming in thick and fast. Eunice says, Ambassador, why is it that we have not positioned Kenya to be the Dubai of Sub-Saharan Africa? Our taxes are too high. Uganda is doing, a, is doing better because Burundi, Congo, South Sudan, Rwanda are getting their goods from Uganda, yet it is landlocked. If the government reduced taxes, we would have all these countries get goods from Kenya. I'll tell Eunice one thing. She's right. We missed a great opportunity 30, 40 years ago to be the Dubai. Mm. But we should not forget one thing that I said a little earlier. We don't have petrodollars. We don't have uh, money coming literally out of the ground that you can build whatever airline you want and resource it however you want. We don't have the ability to put up buildings and leave them there empty yeah. waiting for the people to come. We are a country that is literally having to dig itself out of underdevelopment through the hard work of Kenyans, through tea, through coffee, through trading, through entrepreneurship. So we don't have the same opportunity. We're not running the same race mm. as the Emirates, okay? If we had the resources that those countries have, that question would be truly legitimate. Right now, it misses the point a little bit because it doesn't see that we are having to transform our country. And we have, because like I said, we are the only middle-income country the, you know, in, 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 a con in a sea of LDCs, all right? Yeah. And we've done that without those resources. And yet when Rwanda says they want to be the Singapore of Africa. It's a great thing because we wish them success. If, if Rwanda succeeds, if Uganda succeeds, if Tanzania succeeds, we succeed better. Mm. This is a win-win. If any of these countries remain poor, if any of them fail, 
we fail. That's the story of us and Somalia. Uh -huh. Okay, if Somalia had been a blossoming, you know, vibrant economy, we wouldn't be having the, the problem we're having now. Mm. Our troops wouldn't be dying out there. Yeah. Okay, our goods would be traveling there like they're traveling to Uganda, like they're traveling to Tanzania. Right. Yeah, that we will be investing in great, greatly in those countries. So we shouldn't see them as competition? Never. Their success is our success. Good point, good point. Let's go to tweets now. Weldon says, Djibouti won't be a pushover, push aside. The big nation's interest is geographical advantage of military operations in Africa and the Middle East. Djibouti is giving them that. Can the ambassador tell us what advantages we have exactly? As we would France vote for Kenya over Djibouti? Why would France vote for us? Because if there's a country, there's only two of us that are running, right? From Africa, uh, from, from our part of mm -hmm. Africa. If there's a country that can make the best benefit, bring the best opportunity for the Security Council to be as effective as it should be in the world, not just in our region, it's Kenya. We have the diplomatic depth, we have the diplomatic footprint, we have the diplomatic experience, and we have demonstrated that we are willing to put our money where our mouth is. Kenya is one of a handful of countries in the world that is fully financing its, its, its responsibility to the United Nations. Hmm handful and that's because we have consistently said to the world we believe in multilateralism we believe in the United Nations and therefore we'll put our money into it because we believe it is a good place to invest all right engineer Lazaro Kanyambok says ambassador Masharia should clarify the limit on contentious issues of dual citizenship and to explain why Kenya still refers Uganda as friendly nation, despite their aggression at Migingo Island? <laughs> ah, those are two questions. Yeah, they are. The first one is on the passports, right? Yes, yes. Do you know, uh, it's not my policy, and it's, it's not something that I want to uh, expound on too much. But I will say this. We are missing an opportunity because we are a destination of many uh, there are many people in the world, many entrepreneurs, many investors who want to come and make Kenya their home. If you look at Canada, Singapore, mm -hmm. and many other countries, yeah. if you invest a certain amount in that country, you will get citizenship. Yeah. Yeah. We, need to, we need to open up to this opportunity. We have many foreigners who want to invest in our country and bring great wealth to leverage our, their opportunities here. Why should they have a hard time acquiring citizenship. Mm. Personally, I think that's a problem. Yeah. We're missing opportunities because we don't give confidence to investors that if they come here, they can make this their home. Now, the, the second question on uh, Migingo. Migingo, it's, it's a perception issue. For the people who are living in Migingo, for the fishermen who are getting harassed by the circumstances over there, this is an existential thing. For them, it's a daily annoyance. Yeah. You know, they, they're undermining their prosperity over there with that, with that fracas. But look at the way we are handling it with Uganda. It's maturely, it's to meet, it's to discuss, it's to converse, it's to get a border uh, com uh, committee working. Uh, it's, to, it's to talk about it and resolve it. It's not to take each other to court. It's not to threaten each other uh, with, you know, with destruction of any kind. It is to find solutions that show that we are a brotherly, brotherly countries. Yeah. Unlike the other guys. <laughs> okay. Oh, Senator, Super Senator Johnson Sakaja. My guy. Okay. He says, uh, refreshing clarity. Kenya is Tahili Heshima. Tunga Nemikono Pamoja Kazini. Well done, Senator. All right. Good guy. Yeah. Good guy. Look, uh, you talked about multilateral democracy a moment ago, and you know, in your modesty, you don't even mention that you even wrote a book. Look at this. Where's the camera? Transforming multilateral democracy: the inside story of the Sustainable Development Goals (SDGs). This man authored or co-authored. Was that a tough one, though? Was that tough? Uh, tough. Yeah, I can imagine. It's tough as hell. It took us three and a half years. 
Yep. And to galvanize the entire globe around those goals was extremely difficult. Are, are we on course though? Oh yeah. We are? Kenya? Yes. In some, some, some we're doing amazingly well, like yeah. I said, energy yeah. and, and, and other examples yeah. I could give. Some we're struggling and we have to do better. But all in all, I think we're on course. Bottom line, Belosi, 30 years in the diplomatic service. 30 mm. years, that's, that's probably half your life. It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> and you're st you still have the energy, you still have the optimism for this country. For love of country. Why? Because it's an amazing story. This country is an amazing story. I grew up in a country, as you know, uh, where, you know, I went to school in Mombasa. Yeah, initially, yeah? Initially. Like pre prep school? Yep. I actually went to kindergarten. And we used to travel down by train, but occasionally they, they, you know, my parents would be creative and decide to, to, to drive us down there. God knows what possessed them to do that. Because there was no road after, yeah. you know, yeah. Athi River or something. Yes, yes. You know? And um, it was a great adventure. But look how we've transformed ourselves. Look what we've created against all odds. Because remember, we, we have lived in a very volatile world. And if we weren't doing so well, we would be like many, many other countries on this continent. But instead, we have done reasonably well. We haven't done as well as we could have done. Yeah. You know, there are some countries in this country, in this continent that have done amazing things. Botswana comes to mind mm -hmm. as an example. Yeah. From $60 per capita to, I think they're almost five, $6,000 now. You know, amazing transformation. Okay, but they had a resource, they had diamonds. They invested in them well, and they utilized their resources well, and their governance system held together. We didn't have that opportunity, mm -hmm. but we did have the people. And Kenyans have shown themselves to be amazing wherever they are in the world. And you have to go and see them in situ around the world to really appreciate what Kenyans have been. Yeah. And when you see this excellence that our athle athletes are demonstrating in mm -hmm. the world, that is a signature Kenyan behavior, signature. Those athletes are telling the world there is excellence in Kenya. And it doesn't matter whether it is sculptures, whether it is actors, whether it is doctors, engineers, uh, <laughs> people like you yourself, yeah. when you are at CNN, yeah. the whole world watched you. Mm. They didn't say, oh, he's looking a little clumsy, he must be from <laughs> Africa. They were like, that's Jeff Koinange. Yeah, maybe they did say that. No. <laughs> you are clearly holding your own right out there. Mm. Excellence. And we need to embrace this excellence because this excellence is all we have. Yeah. We don't have oil. Forget about the trickle we're getting out of Trukana. Yeah. We don't have enough oil. We don't have enough gas. We don't have enough gold to transform our opportunities. But we do have some of the best minds and some of the most hardworking people on God's earth. You know, your dad must be very proud of you. Uh, uh, Uncle John, we used to call him, because you know he was my mom's boss huh? at NCCK. Right. Uncle John was a good man. Thank you. He must be very proud of you. Okay, and this is a story that you don't know. So uh, you come back from America, I think in early 80s, and you're working in that bakery downstairs at Tumaini House. Mm -hmm. Remember that bakery? Mm -hmm. You were the counter. Yes. So I come there and I pick up a couple of loaves of bread. All right. And uh, you know, this guy with an American accent, I say, so how much, how much? In my humility, he says, two bags. <laughs> And from then on, my sister Shiro calls you two bags. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't know that. Pelosi, good to see you, man. Thank you. Good luck to, uh, next week in New York. All right. And I hope everything goes well, huh? Kenya will win. Kenya always wins. What an optimistic man. No wonder I call him the diplomat's diplomat. He has his heart in the right place. I tell you, we don't get to speak to too many people who have Kenya's interests at heart. Country first. Everything else second. That's Ambassador Masharia Kamal, Kenya's Principal Secretary, Foreign Affairs and International Relations. Thanks so much for being a part of the show. Remember, if it's Wednesday, it's all about those three letters on the keyboard that follow each other. J K L. Thanks for being a part of the show. Good night. Good luck. God bless Kenya. That's right. <laughs>